So next up, uh, we have a great friend, um, a fellow um, Flint person, um, <laughs> Rick Carter, um, is the executive director of Flint Area Congregations direct, uh, Together. Um, it's an organization that does um, incredible community organizing um, in uh, the Flint community, and so I'm going to bring him up to talk about his experience with this. Thank you, Rick. Thank you, Amanda. Uh, so just to say a few more things about our organization, we're part of the uh, PICO National Organization. I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with PICO. Uh, PICO is in about uh, 24 states and about seven uh, foreign countries. In uh, fact, uh, we really represent about 20 congregations in our community and probably about four to five uh, strategic relationships. And one of the things that's real clear to me and the work that we do in a community organizing, congregation-based community organizing, is that uh, messaging is fundamental to getting things done. So next slide, please. So one of the things that uh, I want to share with you this afternoon is a strategy that was taken on by our national organization called the Land of Opportunity, and it's been in place for about two years. And it's really an effort to bring together uh, clergy lead leaders, faith leaders, and people of faith around the country addressing these issues that are important to us uh, throughout the country around the economy and jobs. Next slide, please. So when you look at the, the reality, and I'm sure this is a familiar uh, picture to all of us in terms of the, the employment lines, in terms of the number of uh, houses that are being foreclosed and underwater, that families are really distressed and they're walking this real tight road. Next slide, please. So we all know what the conversations have been on a national level, and frankly, these conversations have gotten to be pretty tiring. And really, we need to move towards a conversation, as we've talked about this morning, a conversation about what can we do about these issues that are we've, we're facing as a country and as a state, most importantly. And for me personally, I mean, this is getting to the point that I want to hear conversations about what can I do, what can I do to help others to recover, to make sure that life is good for me, for the years that I have remaining, as well as for my children. So next slide, please. As you look at this slide, it kind of indicates that we're at the point of information overload. We get all these uh, statements about what's wrong, why it's wrong, but really not much in the way of a narrative of how do we fix it. So next slide. So one of the things that um, we've done here nationally, uh, locally in the state of Michigan is that we've tried to give context to the national strategy of the land of opportunity. And what we've done is we pulled together in the last month or so a group that's called Michigan Prophetic Voices. And we had our first meeting uh, last uh, month, and we had close to 120 uh, clergy members from all over the state, uh, from the major cities throughout the state. Next slide, please. This, this uh, whole process was led and facilitated by clergy leaders throughout the state. And so what we're saying is that the prophets or the visionaries in the state need to step up and give voice to these issues. What greater place to give voice? I mean, I only think about the, the days of the, the Civil Rights Movement when Dr. King would stand up in the pulpit and talk about these issues and speak truth to the power structures throughout our country. And so what we're saying through this uh, prophetic movement is that we're asking the clergy folks to step up, raise your game to these issues throughout the state. And this is the next slide, just gives you uh, an impression of how full the room was. As I said, we had a close to 120 individuals from around the uh, state from about nine uh, major population centers, and the 
overall reaction from those individuals was this was a great first start and that we're looking forward to even better results in the future. So one, next slide please. We, we did this whole process as kind of an action and it was focused on those major issues that we have as a state. We all know about the, the cuts in the education funding. We all know about the, the safety issues in, in our community. There are at least five of our major cities that are the most violent cities in the country. And so we think about opportunities for reinvestment, opportunities for bringing investment into our community. We think that an important strategy is to make sure that we have safe communities that we have world-class schools because it's a given that when organizations are looking at investing in the community, they take it for granted that you're going to get uh, tax breaks. What they're looking at instead is they're looking at the quality of your schools. They're looking at the quality of your housing stock. They're looking at the safety of your community. And they're looking at the relationships that you have in your community. And if you, frankly, if you fail on any of those points, then you're not going to get investment. So it's about us changing the story about Michigan. And what I have found in discussing this with the members that have just started working with us on this prophetic uh, uh, table is that this, this messaging piece that I've learned from Elaine and from others has been extremely important in terms of helping them shape the message that they will use in their uh, pulpits and their, with their congregations. It's been extremely important, not only with the, the prophetic piece, but also in the work that I'm doing with our, our uh, uh, organization, Flint Area Congregations, together, in the sense that training our leaders of how to respond to a, a press interview making sure that you stay on message, making sure that you talk about the values that you have as a person of faith. Sometimes uh, what I've found in my experience that people of faith want to back away from acknowledging that they are people of faith, when actually that is really something that's important that people want to know because it tells them that this is one of the reasons that you are supporting a particular issue. And Art's giving you the high sign of a minute. So this uh, process, I really encourage you to, to look at it and examine it and to use it, use the components. Well, yeah, the language may be different for your particular organization, but the intent and the design is what really matters, is to use the, the, the notion of making sure that you're talking about the values making sure that you're, you're talking about a vision, making sure that you're engaging people into this conversation. And I'm going to quote from a, one of our traditions. A people perish without vision. Write the vision and make it plain. And so if we're going to move forward, we have to have a clear and plain vision that everyone understands. Thank you.